Hi everyone, in my previous video we have already seen how to create threads using thread class and runnable interface. In the end I have asked two questions. So I hope most of you might already have tried that. If not, then also it's fine as we are going to cover those two topics in today's video. In case you have missed the previous video, please check it out from your top right corner of the screen. Also, in case you want to jump through some specific topic in this video or any other of my video on the channel, you can always select from the chapters which is there on the bottom of your screen and in the description as well. So without any further delay, let's start. The first question was how we can implement the multi-threading solution using functional programming. That includes usage of lambda expressions and functional interfaces. For that, we need to understand the relation between lambda expression and functional interfaces. A functional interface is one that contains exactly one abstract method or a single abstract method. So as far as multi-threading is concerned, the runnable interface satisfies that condition to be a functional interface because it only contains run method which is also abstract. Now let's understand the lambda expression as well. In simple terms, a lambda expression is a compact way to represent an anonymous function. Anonymous fu is function is a function without any name. It can be defined on the spot and use it whenever needed without giving any formal name itself. Just like earlier, if you remember, we have to override the run method and for that we need to create a class implementing the runnable interface and then write the full method signature and body. But using lambda expression, all these can be done in a very neat and clean way. That too in very few lines. Now enough talking, let us code and see how it can be done. Here we are using the same logic we were using in the previous video where we want to sleep the thread for 2 seconds and then print the thread name which is currently executing that part of code. Also in the start and end we have print statements that representing main thread starts and main thread ends. But if you see how we are creating the thread object is little different this time. Earlier we were creating object of our IMPL class which was implementing the runnable interface. But here we have used lambda expression. This particular lambda expression has been used as an implementation of that abstract method which is run from runnable interface. As run method do not accept any argument, thus this lambda expression also there is no input arguments and whatever business logic was present in the overridden run method in our previous video that is available as body in this lambda expression as well. Now let us execute and observe the output. So here you can see output is also similar to the previous example. First main thread starts and ends are printed and after that once thread gets their uh, desired CPU then they start their execution. Like thread 8 got the CPU first so it has started execution first and uh, later on other threads also got executed. This is not the only way to use lambda expression. We can also create a reference of runnable and provide its implementation in the form of lambda expression, the same lambda expression that we have written. And later that reference we can pass it as an argument to the uh, constructor of this thread object. Now let me code that as well and show you how we can do that. Yeah. <laughs> 
this is how a reference of runnable interface can be assigned to a lambda expression which will act as an implementation of run method and it can be used to pass as an argument in any function call whenever it is applicable i hope this particular topic is clear now in case you have any doubt or do you want to understand how the lambda expressions work please check out the video from top right corner of your screen and still if you have any doubt please let me know in the comment section now let's move to the next question which was what if we if we want to return something from the thread execution in java 1.5 an interface callable was added in java.util.concurrent package this was added to handle the issue or other shortcomings which are present in a runnable interface it can return any type of objects from the thread execution and the method we need to override is called call method instead of run method now let me show you how we can implement the business logic using callable and then we will discuss a couple of ways to utilize the callable implementation as well Here I have implemented the callable interface and by doing so I have to provide the implementation of call method. You can note here that call method also returns something which is an integer. But depending on our requirement you can implement accordingly and return any type of object that you want. And inside this implementation we are doing the same business logic. Uh, we are making the thread to sleep for 2 seconds that represents the delay in processing. And after that we are printing what is the name of the thread. And in the end I am using thread local random to get one random integer value that this particular thread will be returning back. Now how to create and execute multiple threads using callable. There is no direct way to do it, just like runnable we have the direct way to do it. As constructor of thread do not expect callable. I am going to discuss two ways here, one where we will be using future task and second one using executor framework. Future task is a class that represents a task that will be executed in the future and it accepts callable instance for the execution. Now let me code using future task how we can create and execute the threads. Here I have created an object of a class which has implemented the callable interface and next I have created two arrays to hold the objects of future task and threads. In the for loop next I have assigned the actual object of future task by passing the callable instance and assigning it to the array members. Similarly for the thread we are creating the objects by passing the future task as a parameter because future task is a distant child of a runnable interface. Thus it can be used to create the thread objects but callable cannot be directly used to create the objects. So that is the reason why we are using future tasks. 
and after creating the thread using the future task we are starting that particular thread inside the for loop using dot start method so this whole code will use the callable implementation and execute the logic written in the call method using 10 different threads and these future tasks will contain the returned value from call method execution itself so how to fetch that particular value to fetch that data we can use dot get method which is a blocking call and it will exactly return whatever is callable execution is returning so in the next for loop what we are doing in the result variable for each and every task we are executing dot get operation and whatever value that thread is returning that will be a random value here because we are returning a random value so that will be assigned to result and after that we are printing that that particular thread has returned what value and in the end we are printing main thread ends now let us run this and observe the output as well So here you can see in the output first execution is started and after that we are applying the get operation to get whatever value they are returning and printing the same as well but there is one difference that you will be able to see it here you can see the main thread starts is executed in the beginning and main thread ends is executed in the end so why is that what could be the reason for this because in the earlier examples we have seen these two lines are getting printed well before any of the thread statements are getting printed so the reason for that is this get call this get call is a blocking call it will not let the execution uh, reach the line 24 unless all of these threads return something so in a way till this point it is non-sequential but this particular for loop make the code sequential from here itself that means any statement which is written after this dot get that will be executed in the sequential form unless this execution is complete the next statements will not be executed so that is the reason the main thread ends is printed at last in this case now the second way or I must say the most recommended way to create threads not only for callable implementation but for runnable as well that is using executor framework. So Java has provided the executor framework to handle lifecycle and pooling of threads for performance improvement. We will not see the executor framework in detail today but definitely we will cover it once it is due. So let me code it and then we will have a code walkthrough for the same. Here we have created an object of executor service that will create a pool of 10 threads that is at max 10 thread can execute using this executor service at the same time. So to generate a thread pool we are using executor classes new fix thread pool method and provide the number of threads we want to have in that particular pool. You have to be very careful while setting this value of number of threads. Do not set it to a very high value otherwise it may crash your entire server as well. So you can decide on the size of the thread pool by carefully considering the resources that you have on the server. How to decide that actual number we will discuss in detail when we will be doing the executor framework session. 
Now after this, using the executor service, we have submitted the object of callable implementation using executor.submit and that particular call will return uh, an object of future of integer because integer is the value which is being returned from this callable and after that whatever future is returned we are adding it into a list of future integers that we have created earlier and once that part is done everything is submitted after that we have one more for loop where we want to see what values were returned from uh, all those uh, executions of this callable so here you can see we are not creating any threads we are not starting any threads all these things are already managed by the executor framework so that is the beauty of this executor framework you don't have to manage the thread life cycle what we will be doing we will be just defining the number of threads we need in a pool and after that what job we want to execute using those threads so for that we have couple of methods one is executor.submit then we also have executor.execute as well so all these details we will be discussing in the separate session of executor service so in this uh, in the next for loop whatever we are, what we are doing we are just printing whatever value is returned again using the get call so if you remember there was one get call in the future task as well so this is not the future task this is the future object so this is also something which will be returned in the future itself there is one more thing which i have missed it is we need to shut down the executor service as well because this will create resources in the form of thread pool so if we do not shut it down that will cause a memory leak in the program so how to shut it down so for that executor dot shutdown is the command so as you can see in the end we have a shutdown for the executor service so that pool can be destroyed and resources can be released back now let us execute and observe the output for this code using executor service So in the output you can clearly see the threads which are used to execute are being picked up from a pool specifically pool 1 here we can see and the returned value which is a random integer is also getting printed here and again we can see the main thread ends is printed in the end because of that blocking get call. Now we have covered both the important topics as promised. In case you still have some doubt in these, please let me know in the comment section. Also, if you find it useful, you can like and share the video and you can also provide a positive feedback in the comments. Now I'm ready with few more scenarios which I want you to try it out on your own and in the next session we will cover them as well. First is if we need to pause the execution of currently running thread then how we can achieve it what are the different ways to do that second scenario is suppose there are three different threads and first thread is responsible for doing some basic setups and the other two threads will perform some business logic which is independent of each other but those two threads depend on the first thread that means second and third thread will need that setup to be completed before they can start the executions. So that means the thread number two and thread number three, they can only start their execution once the ex execution of first thread is completed. So how we can achieve it in the multi-threading? I want you to try it out on your own and in case you face any issue, we can discuss in the next session. Till then, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.